What has caused this downfall? What has caused us to be in this predicament? Everything comes on the surface of wealth. Okay, who's got more money? And this fikr caused people to be ghafil of their children, especially living here in UK. Undoubtedly, my dear brothers, let me make this out very clear. I'm not here to upset the status quo. I encourage that Muslims should be in every field. Let me make that as a disclaimer from the outset. I say that every person should have a good education. I'm saying that in Urdu, so that they don't understand anything. I'm saying that you should have a good education. This is also and that is also. Keep a balance. We keep a balance between the two. That's what I'm saying from the outset. However, if you have to give preference to one over the other, by Allah, you would be better off giving preference to deen because what Allah stores for you in the Akhirah will remain forever. What you have here by the Qasam of Allah will come to an end. And I say rather than cry tears over a loss of dunya than the loss of a walad or a child. We put so much effort into our worldly things, subhanAllah. My garden, look how nice it looks. Look on my wallpaper. If it slightly peels up, I feel a pain in my heart. But the same children who I make, who, who might come from, from me, my own flesh and blood, when I see them turn away from deen, there's no marham, there's no cream, there are no tablets, there is no antidote that can soothe your heart once you see them go onto that path. Now, they care, Rasulullah to encourage us, to give us targheeb. To bring our attention towards this, he mentioned a numerous a number of hadith. But one thing which I'll mention to you, inshallah, I've got to be cognizant of time, but inshallah, we'll try and fit some in with the, with the, with the grace of Allah. He mentioned one very beautiful hadith. Everyone here will die. No one can say, I'm going to live forever. Your death, my brother, is muqaddar, and nothing can change that in this dunya. If anybody was going to live forever, who do you think the Pro Allah would have chosen? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lekin even he came to his end appointed worldly time. So then, we are in the middle of the earth. We have not died, we have not died. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانِ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثَةَ When a human being dies, when a son of Adam dies, Everything is now cut off in respects to the Akhirah except for three things. In terms of good deeds, he's talking about. So your deeds are cut off except for three. Number one, he mentions He mentioned three examples. Number one is that a person gives such a form of perpetual sadaqah, continuous sadaqah, where that remains until the day of Qiyamah or until its appointed time, and that continues to give the person benefit even whilst he or she is in the grave. Number two, the person leaves behind a legacy of knowledge, a, no, a legacy of, of ilm and knowledge, and that continues to benefit the ummah. That's the second example. And the third example is to leave behind such offspring, such children, such awlad that will continue to invoke and pray for that individual even after his or her demise. <laughs>